Now, overnight, YouTube followed Twitter and Facebook's move earlier this week to combat misinformation about the Hong Kong protests. It's shutting down more than 200 accounts it said were co- coordinating to spread information about the demonstrations. YouTube's owner Google said attempts had been made to disguise the origin of these accounts and other activity commonly associated with coordinated influence operations. But unlike Facebook and Twitter, Google stopped short of explicitly is explicitly saying that it believed the Chinese government had been behind these accounts. But on Chinese social media sites, there's been a strong and hostile reaction to these moves by the American tech giants. Kerry Allen monitors Chinese media for the BBC. Both Facebook and Twitter are actually blocked in mainland China, so. There was some surprise from mainland Chinese that these social networks were being mentioned in China anyway, because a lot of people have not heard of them; they can't access them. But big official media like People's Daily put out very, very critical comments, and they promoted this hashtag campaign,、uh, which was "This is so-called freedom of speech." And what they did was they mounted very aggressive, very angry commentaries against Facebook and Twitter, saying that it was U.S. backing trying to suppress China's true dialogue. On what was happening with regards to the Hong Kong protests, saying that Western so-called democracies that promoted free speech were actually suppressing Chinese voices. How can we be sure, though, that they themselves, all these people commenting against this hashtag、uh, on Chinese social media, weren't themselves in some way state actors? We don't know for sure at all, but、uh, but this is very common in China that there are state actors who. On mass, thousands of them promote messages in line with the government's message, and they're known as the Fifty Cent Party because they get paid a small amount of money, fifty cents, which is Wu Mao in China. So a lot of poor people, poor students, think they can make a bit of extra money by creating accounts and posting messages in line with the government's message. So sometimes, if there's a law coming into effect and the government says this is a trial law, and they try to gauge opinion, what you'll get is you'll get. Comments repeated again and again, sometimes using very, very formal language, indicating that there are fifty cent people behind this campaign in order to promote the idea that that this message is welcomed by the public, but they may be people who are being influenced by the state. During this whole Hong Kong affair, has there been any strand、uh, allowed on Chinese social media of of support for the demonstrators, or is it or has it been one voice basically? It has been one voice. So what initially happened was when these demonstrations became big in early June, originally the government just outright censored them and hoped they'd go away. So there were a lot of terms related to the protests that were removed. The word Hong Kong, Hong Kong protests, even the first reported figure of how many people took out to them, onto the streets. Very very niche. Words and figures like this, so that was 1.03 million, and any posts that mentioned 1.03 million were automatically outright removed from social media. But as these protests have continued, what they've realised is they can't outright censor them anymore. There's a lot of freedom for Chinese people to travel to Hong Kong and to see things for themselves. So what's happened instead is that the Chinese government has been handpicking footage of what it sees of protesters. Being violent towards either police or the public, and it's been creating this dialogue of fear and saying that what's happening in Hong Kong is aggressive and violent, and not peaceful protests. I mean, we've seen both. We've seen we've seen conflicts between protesters and the police, but also we've seen very peaceful sit-ins as well. That's Kerry Allen, BBC's China media analyst.